Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to the Rad Movement YouTube channel. Uh, and we're gonna change things up a little bit today uh, because as a lot of you know, most of you know, all of you could know, I don't know. Uh, I am a tattooer. Uh, I've been doing tattoos for 26 years now. Um, and I own a tattoo studio named Rad Inc in beautiful, sunny Melbourne, Florida. So, uh, in owning this studio, I have taken on some apprentices, and one of those apprentices is here with me, and his name is Jeremy Jones. Howdy! Um, so Jeremy was in one of the videos that uh, we put out about uh, being a, a parent, being a father, mm -hmm. being a dad, yeah. Um, and so in his time with me, Jeremy was like, you know, also a little backstory real quick. Jeremy um, lives across the state. So, you know, he looks on YouTube and tries to find tattoo uh, content that's geared towards the apprentice and he couldn't find me. So we're gonna start making some. Uh, we don't know what it's gonna be called yet. We're thinking somewhere along the lines of Rad Tattoo Academy, uh, the Rad Ink Academy. Um, any other ones? Rad Tat School, Rad a Tattooey. <laughs> we, we don't know yet, bro. We'll get there. We don't know yet. So <laughs> by the time we uh, release this episode, we might have it figured out. We might not. Um, go ahead and uh, leave your suggestions below for names for funsies. Uh, we'll okay. get to it. Yeah. So yeah. With that being said, we're gonna get cracking into this tattoo. Um, yeah. Well, Jeremy and viewer friends, what we have here is a wonderful human named Brian, and um, this is a blastover style cover up. Uh, and this is the finished product you just saw on the screen for those yeah, watching. Yeah, so um, as you can see, you can see some of the old tattoo uh, through the lines, and I thought it would be a fun cover up blastover scenario. Um, to get rid of the tattoo underneath. Um, and you can still kind of see some of the texture through it once it's healed, you can't see that uh, initially. And that's one thing I want to talk about. So a brand new tattoo is gonna look different than a healed tattoo um, almost every time. Uh, you know, I've done some tattoos that look just as good if not better healed. Uh, but most of the time, you know, the way that the skin heals over a tattoo, it's gonna look uh, less vibrant and also you're gonna lose some saturation. Uh, so in this, you may lose some saturation, um, you may lose some color here and there, but uh, at the end of the day, this is, only, this is actually intended to be a first pass. Uh, even though there's wall-to-wall -wall color on it, um, I just wanted this to be the first pass because uh, there's things I can go back and tighten, um, and there's transitions that can be made with the colors that can be more fun. We can strengthen some of the colors, uh, and due to the fact that it's a blast over, we can bury that old tattoo a little more. When it comes to cover-ups or blast overs, I like to do a minimum of two saturations, uh, up to four or six saturations or more, depending on how gnarly the cover-up is, but that is why I say anything can be covered up, because uh, it's like paint on the wall, right? Uh, you go over it enough times, you put enough layers, you put enough pixels per square inch, and now all of a sudden, <clears throat> your old tattoo is buried under all that color. Which that's like a way I've been looking at, <clears throat> and I'm coming at this from a, um, from a new tattooer perspective. So uh, the whole purpose of this podcast slash tutorial type educational um, information is for me to just get on record with Robbie and just ask him, you know, what are you doing here? Like, for example, uh, what what mag, this is a mag needle, obviously. So, yeah, this is, um... So what configuration are you using right here? With this is uh, either a 27 bug pin or a 25 standard. Um, and we can even go into the difference, not specifically, but a 27 bug pin is, um, would be the same as... A 27 bug pin would be the same as a, as a 25 standard, um, just due to the fact that the bug pins are... Uh, Smaller needles. Yeah, smaller needle, longer taper, thinner, um, and you can fit more of them. So there's 27 needles per the size of 25 uh, standard needles. And so, uh, 
what I've brought up before is that <clears throat> some people say the bug pins have less um, trauma. They give less trauma to the skin. Do you think that's, that has any merit? Um, I usually, so the reason why I said it's either or, because I don't really fucking pay attention to what needles I'm using. Um, if it's, if it's, if it's a 25, uh, standard or a 27 bug pin, uh, it could be flat, uh, you know what I mean? Um, the flatter curved. Flatter curved. Right. I really don't care. Uh, when I'm doing mag lining like this, a flat one's gonna be a little easier, but I'm pretty sure that was a curve. Yeah. Uh, so I don't really pay attention to a whole lot of specifics, as you know, um, but that's one of the things. Which I think is unique, and, yes. and that's why you get the results you do, because um, we decided to start this after, I'm, I'm doing a long distance apprenticeship, as we just spoke about, and in the meantime, I'm supplementing my education with YouTube and you know internet information, because um, I'm only at the shop like two days a week, and a lot of people say like, oh, um, the flat mags will you're easier. It's easier to chew people's skin up because of the corners. Curved mags are better for beginners. And and what I've learned working with Robbie is that he's kind of like just throw all that shit out the window. Like you can do whatever you want with anything essentially. Like you make you kind of make it your own. Right. You yeah. Your own style and and a lot of the stuff you can find on the internet is you know sometimes complete BS. Yeah, and you know like uh, the way I look at it, it works for me the way I do things. Right. Um, I am not the best tattooer, I'm not the cleanest tattooer, uh, you know, I'm not the qualityest tattooer, but I'm a pretty fucking great tattooer. Yeah. You know, if, if we're gonna take all the time sure. I put into it, I, I, I know it. It's hey, taken. you were on TV, man. Hey, man! <laughs> um, but like, all of that aside, you know, I've put a lot of work into this, um, and honestly, I feel like I can say I'm a great tattooer, oh, because sure. I've tried so much. Um, and I've tried a lot of what didn't work and a lot for me what didn't work was the stuff people told me I couldn't do You know, I had guys tell me you can't black out nipples well, why? Bullshit. You know like watch this nipple, right? You know like and, and you know I was told you had to have a solid outline and, and you had to start You know with with a solid strong black outline, you know, and then I was dicking around with bloodlining and gray lining and stuff like that years ago and Bloodlining just because I learned this term Recently, it's just lining with no ink in the middle. And you do it very fast uh, as to not put a lot of trauma to the skin, but then now you've got this bloody line work that you can build off of, and then later if you want to go and put darker lines, boom, you can enjoy, you know, crisping up some lines with some actual black. And if you, you do know. that bloodline correctly, it's not going to leave. Right, exactly. You know, I mean, it, it, it's 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 always going to be this this bloody little thing even if it's not bleeding anymore hours later it can still be it's going to be pissed off it's going to be irritated because you you cause trauma to the skin so um it's always going to stick around it's i love bloodlining uh when it's got its purpose uh this one i'm not doing any lining here it's um, though i know i was filming this and while i was filming you're like you notice how this this mag is the same size as the these Right. Big, big bold lines I'm doing, so that's kind of convenient. You know, it's, um, yeah. You, why don't you tell them how you're using this mag to hit, you know, make those solid straight lines. Well, and you can see right here exactly as, right before we were talking about it, I'm just running it up and down and moving a little shimmy back and forth. Um, you're like pushing the ink? I'm pushing the ink and I'm doing a tiny, 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 tiny circle. Yeah. Really baby circle. Um, and it kind of just looks like pushing back and forth. Yeah, it looks but like, it, like you're sweeping a floor. Right, I, I, I kind of am, but there's a little bit of a back a and forth bit. motion. Just to get rid of those pixels that wouldn't be Exactly, yeah. because if you just brush it straight in, you're now you have, have a rake. Lines. Yeah, yeah you've got these rake marks. Exactly. So, um, you know, just a little shimmy back and forth. Uh, sometimes when I use this method, I'll make a nice circle. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the time, I'm not so concerned about getting super crispy, crisp lines in a situation like right. this. Because this thing, there was so much going on, and you know, we had all this color and all this black. Uh, like I said, I'll go back and I'll crisp things up later. But the cool thing is, I'm not putting a lot of stress and tension on myself. I'm covering a lot of ground because I'm being just real loose, but purposeful. And, and this is a mindfuck of a tattoo because it is an optical illusion. It's an optical so, illusion, I'm, and it's a blast over. Yeah, and I'm cool. trying to incorporate- so There's stuff in the back, there's stuff in the foreground, it's an optical yeah. illusion. 
There's a lot going on, so. There's a lot going yeah. on. And so, you know, uh, I like to do this to myself where I challenge myself a lot. Mm-hmm. You've seen lately, I've been really enjoying doing the optical. Yeah, illusion. during it, you're like, man, this is starting. Because as you go, and you guys are going to see this in the video, it starts progressing to mo- look more. Like, it'll start screwing with your eyes. It'll look like the optical illusion. Right. <laughs> and you'll see that as, as more lines get filled in here. And, you know, um, I'm never happy with these optical illusions. Uh, they look cool, but they don't dance to the eyes the way I'd like them to. Um, once you think they're that's tattooed, just it's on the skin. And it's I don't bad. know. I don't know. I'm I'm working on a way to make it really, really, really work. So I'm figuring it out as time goes on. I'm playing with optical illusions a lot, and you know, a lot of the optical illusions that do work are like the uh, the fucking hole, or you know, the, yeah, the that pole yeah. that twists around. You know, something that involves shading too. So this one's um, definitely kind of out of the ordinary from what you'd see. T- right. Tattooed on somebody's face. Right. And that's what I love about Brian. He just lets it be like real wild and just real loose and just kind of mm-hmm. let's have a ball. And, and he dude. likes, cut, he's kind of like, I'm assuming he's like, I'm super into color. Do your, do your thing. Yeah. And I want a lot of colors. And you yeah. guys are going to see all the colors he starts packing. And I got some good shots of blending. Um, he can kind of explain that as it's happening in the video. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, Brian always lets me just do like rainbow stuff. He's got a bunch of rainbow stuff on him Super already. He's rainbowed out. Yeah, he's got tons you of rainbow see stuff. His, you'll see his nails at some point. They're pretty Yeah, gnarly. his They're nails like, are uh, like a... Holographic. Like a, yeah, like, the fucking yeah. chameleon paint. Fucking yeah. Pokemon carded out, dude, from an early 2000s reference. <laughs> no, Pokemon's a... a so, thing. but one of the things I want to I want to bring up, so Brian actually gifted me a number of different things. Uh, he, he has this, this business called Shiny Bags Plus. Um, this is like the, the client artist relationship side of things uh, that I want to discuss <clears throat> since I'm kind of just going over just black lines like they were. Um, mm-hmm. But so you build these relationships with your clients. You've seen it. We, well, you know, we, we yeah. built a relationship outside of tattooing, but like uh, still the relationships are always being built when you're, when you're, when you're sitting in a tattoo chair. Yeah, it's a um, lot of like back and forth. You're there for hours. Hours. You know, you get yeah. to know someone pretty well during that. Um, I've always kind of, especially being tattooed by Robbie, it's it's kind of like a like a therapy session almost. <laughs> like, in a sense, not not like in the crack, like in the you know old school. This is a therapist chair, you know. But it's like you're one on one with someone for six hours straight. Some stuff's going to be shared. There's know? electricity being shared between yeah. you. There's pain. So there's vulnerability. Right. Right. Um, there's an openness there that a lot of the time allows people to share parts of themselves. But like, you know, uh, I mentioned his nail polish one time and I always paint my toes, you know? Um, And he brought me a bottle of that nail polish. That's cool. Like that's super fucking cool, you know? It's like thoughtful, these things that people do. Like this one dude I tattooed in Minneapolis, he gave me a a hand carved spoon. Like he carved this fucking spoon out of wood. And like the way he presented it to me was very ceremonial and it meant a lot to him. Oh, he spent time on that, dude. Right, As dude. someone who's carved a spoon out of right. wood, I know he spent hours on that shit. And I've had, sure. I've had everything from, you know, drugs <laughs> to handmade... Hey man, you want some heroin? To handmade spoons and in between. Heroin was all, the only thing I've not been offered yet. You can cook good. your heroin with the spoon I made you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I tell you what though, the first time I was given cocaine, I think it was the only time I was given cocaine as a tip. The dude was telling me oh. during the process how he gets people hooked on coke and drugs. What the fuck? And like, he's like, yeah, I'll get people hooked on the shit that I sell, and then I sell it to him. And then like, gives me <laughs> some coke as a tip, and I'm like, Bro, I don't... What are you doing here, uh, man? You, you just told me your whole thing. Dude, and I was like maybe 17 or 19, you know? Oh, I just dude, started so tattooing. Not smart so, enough to make a good decision. Oh, no, I did. I panicked okay. and ran to the fucking bathroom and flushed that shit because I was afraid okay. the cops were going to come get me right away. Good like, dude, you, bro. <laughs> he tried to set me up and he told me his plan. Like, get the fuck out of here. He might not be here right now. Oh, and so, all this yeah. is on his <laughs> Sorry, <screen>. guys. <laughs> And a lot of this is going to be informal because we want it to be relatable to, to other people. And it's just, you know. And if you're an apprentice, you got to hear these stories, man, because this is fucking yeah, real life. This is the world. <laughs> you know, you, I am an apprentice currently, and I'm going to try to come at it from your guys' and myself, my perspective. Right. Um, and just try, like, all this, all the shit you guys are thinking about, I want to try to address that. So, like, for example, right here, you're incorporating an older tattoo, that, that, that Jack tattoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. what he's so, doing right now is, like, tearing it. Yeah, exactly. The 
perfect. You just said it. Yeah, I'm tearing it. I'm, I'm creating rips and fucking, you know, breakages and stuff. And like, this is, this is a first session, like I said. So, you know, I'm not going to love the way it turns out right now. What but liner I, are you using to do uh, Am I using a liner or am I using a shader? a shader? That looks like a mag. Yeah, I think it's a mag right there. <laughs> Show a little mag, you're hitting those lines with the mag. So yeah, I do make mag lines um, in different ways, you know, like I, like, like you said, mag, yeah. you were told you're not supposed to run the mag up sideways. That's how I make lines with mags, right. but like, that's how I make <laughs> sketch lines with mags. And like, you know, I built these lines up. You can tell, definitely tell it's a mag the way it's uh, yeah. the way it's And like you just skin. held it sideways to where it's yeah. like going, you know, and the needles are in a straight line. And that's how you made those little lines right there. Right. So you didn't just change your needle, bust out a, a liner or a shader. You just use the mag and what you had. At right. Hand. Right. And like with this, you know, I'd, I'd probably bring some more black shading under um, the front side of the card that isn't torn up, down towards the bottom of the tattoo, or down towards the bottom of the jack card that's still there. I'd probably drop some more drop shadow there uh, to make it just. Uh, Blend in, together in the better. Session or? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and this and is a first session. This guys. is a Keep first session. Yeah, I, and I do, I do things very loose. Um, I like to, I like to uh, let it talk to you. Yeah, and I like to allow the. So right now we're we're spraying some holy water on there. Holy water by Saint Mark. Um, it's a numbing product, and uh, it just it once the skin is broken open, uh, it helps really good to make comfortable for the client more. And that's, that was a very weird shot. way of saying that. Helps really good to make them uh, good, good <laughs> Comfortable for the client makes more. Them <laughs> I, I included that shot though to kind of, that was another apprentice um, who was, cause when you have gloves on, what did you tell me today? The guy, oh, yeah. the guy with so, the gloves doesn't do the- Yeah, the guy with the gloves doesn't do the shit. So yeah. if you got no gloves on, um, help out. You um, say like, hey, you know, so-and-so, can you grab me that holy water and you know, give me a couple spritz? And that's exactly what she did in that case. Right, exactly. So, you know, um, I, yeah, there, she, yeah, there, there we she's go. Doing it again there. And so, you know, uh, and then it keeps the cross contamination not a thing. Right. Because, you know. Now that bottle's uh, still clean. That bottle's clean. Um, it's not being, it's not touching any of the dirty areas that we're working, uh, you know, things like that. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're keeping it clean and we're, we're helping, we're helping our friend Brian uh, not hurt so bad. I do use numbing through my processes. I use, uh, Pre, pre deadener like TKTX on beforehand, uh, and then I'll use a Hustle Helper. It's a numbing soap during the process. Which they just it's just it's topical lidocaine, right? Essentially, um, and then uh, Holy Water by Saint Mark. I use that uh, also, and that helps me That's or helps the client. The That's during the process. Yeah. Actually, or on breaks too. Or on breaks. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll spray them. So I'll, I'll do the TKTX before. I'll use the Hustle uh, Hustle Helper throughout because it's a numbing soap. Um, and then I'll use the holy water on breaks typically. Right. Uh, but sometimes I don't. I just use, you know, I'll just have, you know, an apprentice spray some holy water on, or I'll just spray holy water on during the breaks. Just depends on the client. Uh, some people are tougher than others. Uh, and mm -hmm. toughness just means that they can hide their pain better. Yeah. <laughs> um, seriously. It all hurts. Um, and, and a lot of the people do this uh, for, it's like a therapy thing. You know, pain therapy is a real thing. I, I've, I've done it many times with suspension. Um, and tattooing, I'm sure I've done it. I just don't like it as much. <laughs> yep. It's harder for me to get tattooed. I've done it sometimes um, without knowing I was doing it. Yeah, you do You do it a lot on accident. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's battling your, your anxieties yeah, and yeah. shit. Cause like you I know. feel like better after. I'm like, oh yeah, I probably needed yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. Was, yeah. Gets a lot of shit out. Uh, for a lot of people it's like that. Yeah. But you know, as you can see, there's becoming this like dimensional element of just like you were talking about, you start to see the illusion coming together. Mm -hmm. I've not watched this yet. Yeah, so, this know, is now, also Robbie's first time. I just put this together last uh, yesterday. Yeah, and, and this is Robbie's first time watching it as we're recording right now. And I don't usually watch my full tattoos uh, played back, so I know I'll learn some things myself. And also um, keep in mind, this is what this is what a three and a half hour tattoo. Yeah, we, we put three and a half to, hours or so to twenty seven minutes. Yeah, um, so he sat like a champ throughout the whole thing. Uh, and that was the thing I want. I like to get a major chunk put down. Uh, years ago, I asked Josh Payne how he's so fast. And he's like, dude, you just gotta make it, you gotta plan it that way. So now when I do my pieces, I plan out nice large fields of color that I can put together with some nice fades and some nice mm -hmm. dimensional elements and some nice highlights, some nice drop shadows. Um, but like, it's so nice to just get a big fat bunch of color 
banged in there. Covers really. such a large area, and that 27 yeah. mag really, really it's, gets it's it in like there. It's like a small toothbrush. For right. those of you, if you can see on the close-up shots, the 27 mag, is it's enormous. It's like half an inch. <laughs> it gets there, yeah. We actually we should measure more. them one time. Yeah, we should. Um, but the 35 is what I like to use as well for larger And areas. that's a monster. Um, and then I also have a 45. I don't use that as much. The 35 I love. It's actually become my go-to more so than a 27. The 35. Um, yeah, yeah, but you know, I, I also, uh, I've now gotten to a point where I don't do really small tattoos unless I'm doing it. Right, right. Uh, and like, you really, 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 really gotta be somebody special to me to, to get a small tattoo out of me. And with the, uh, those giant mags, and that's something, this is something you've taught me, you don't have to use all of those needles in that configuration all right. at once. You can turn it on its side. You yes. know, just hit it with the corner and you're only getting, you know, six or seven needles. Absolutely, and you can see that. I mean, I can use just one pin, which you will you see know. in like some close-ups. I'm sure you've seen it already in yeah. this video because I've seen I've seen me rock the needle sideways mm -hmm. uh, a number of times. But yeah, so I like to do large fields of color, um, and so uh, I do circle, 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 circles to get it packed the in there. When you're packing that color, mm -hmm. you're, you're doing those small circles, and then I blend them back over each other. So it's like. Circle whip, circle whip, circle, circle whip. So you know what I'm saying? I, I do the circles and then I whip into the, the color prior to, and I whip. So I use my darks and I saturate real good and then I whip out. And then I, you know, I bring my mid in and then I whip into that and saturate those so together like, and then whip out. Is it common practice for you? Because most people start with the darker colors, right? Yes, and then I, they just, they I always... typically do, but sometimes I'll go mid tones and then I'll put my darks over that. Um, and and gotcha. some, something to that is, um, you know, making sure you don't take too many passes, making sure you don't cause too much trauma. You yeah, trauma is always something you guys got to be absolutely um, aware of because the more you um, are going over that skin, the more and more tiny, tiny holes you're putting into. Yep. And eventually, it's just gonna start falling. You're apart. gonna tear the paper. And that's when you get just blowouts and just tear um, well, lots of trauma. Well, blowouts are that's, that's from more, trauma. That's line work. Yeah, blowouts are right. our line work, um, but the trauma was scar tissue. Have, I should have yeah, said. exactly. Scar and, tissue. and so that's the cool thing. Jeremy is an apprentice, so like he's learning things yeah, see, through this, this and this, this is, is cool. Process. Yeah, and like it's cool. I like those mess ups because it lets us teach, you know, and give answers to yeah. questions. And I've always so, said, and he's heard it a hundred times. I got to screw something up to learn. Yeah, you got to sink to swim. Yeah, so, like, absolutely. I love being wrong because then if I'm correct and I'm like, okay, now I don't have to make that mistake again. Right, right. And so now we're just going through the rainbow. Um, and so what, what I like to do with all my tones, I like to have at least a three-step uh, color spectrum. So like with my oranges, I like to go from like a nice deep, like brown or like reddish orange. And you use, like, use star bright yeah. as well, star bright ink. Yeah, I use star bright colors. Um, that's what I started on, that is what I use now. Uh, they're a wonderful company, they make quality colors. Uh, they're yellow and they're white are the best on the market. Even when I was sponsored by Fusion, I used to say that. <laughs> um, uh, it's just true. Um, they're amazing. Uh, one thing about orange, don't care what brand it is, I've not seen an orange that holds up over the years the way other colors Yeah, do. you mentioned that before. Orange the orange, after, after a few years, it will start falling yeah, out or um, just fade. Yeah, it's weird. It'll fall out completely, uh, oddly. But um, I remember Jesse Smith did a light fast study with with orange, and he stopped using it for a while. Orange he, completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah gotcha. You know, but he used to use it a whole lot. So you know, I, I like orange a lot, um, but it's a weird color like that. So you know, over the years, uh, your orange might fall out, and that might happen. And while and that's I'm thinking okay. about it, it seems like a, in a lot of these, you're it's not too much of a concern from what it looks like as an outsider of you hitting those large black areas that you've already hit. So if the color just, if you, um, well, it's like kind it of like a show blend. Up, yeah, so sense. you're blending it kind of into that yeah. black a little yeah. bit. Yeah, as long as you don't fucking, you know, and you can see I'm very like fast and whippy with it to a yeah, degree. You're, loose with it. you're very loose with it because, you know, we're blending it in there. You can, yeah. if you pay close attention, you can see when I'm saturating heavy and you can see when I'm, you know, just kind of feathering and playing around. What you're doing now because you just went to a lighter purple. Yeah. Right here, which is why I included the shot because you're you're blending it out. You're making right. it lighter. Oh wow, that is, dude, that's really cool. Seeing the fucking um, yeah. seeing the effect coming together. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's why. Yeah. That. Awesome. I dig that. I dig that. Yeah. So you know, um, wow. Huh. 
<laughs> Told you it's a good video, Mike. And so right here, I left that eyeball and I actually... Yeah, so we're gonna get to that eyeball right now, actually. Okay, yeah. So you just busted out um, a, some a darker smaller mag. I yeah, believe. yeah, I did. And I and I took some darker um, purples out. So I took my deep yeah, violet yeah. and I made it to where uh, it's super dark purples. And that eyeball that just... Is the old tattoo. Yeah, that's the old tattoo. And that's what you kind of, you know, like... And that's cool things you can play with is like play off old tattoos. Yeah. Play off other tattoos around the tattoo you're doing and just kind of incorporate it into the, the main piece, which is something I've learned from you for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I always tell people when they're getting cover-ups is what would you... What would you get there if you had nothing there? Yeah. So what would your dream tattoo be if you weren't combating a cover-up? Because most of the time, you just watched me do that tonight. Yeah. I'll, it's like a blast over, really. You know, you just fucking... A blast over for the, yeah. the new apprentices out there would be... It's what? just a tattoo on top of an old tattoo with zero regard of what shows gotcha. through because it's part of the fun. Is, what, is it the same thing as a cover-up? So a blast over is kind of more a traditional thing. Okay. Where it's like it's traditional, has a lot of um, open skin. So like the way that those bold lines and dark black and whippy blacks and whippy colors uh, play with the old tattoo. It's like this strong tattoo on top of uh, an old tattoo and that one's a blast over there. Gotcha. You see what I'm and saying? He's showing me a tattoo on his leg for the for the so, listeners at home. So maybe we can try and put that in if we can. Yeah. Uh, show uh, an idea of a blast over. Yeah, absolutely. But this is a blast over yeah, in well, the sense this of- This whole video would be- This, this is like a cover up blast over. Yeah. It's, it's because we're covering completely um, and we're blasting over completely. But like like I said, in the traditional world, that blast over has that fun because you can see that old tattoo in his face some, you know? Yep, yep. So things like you. that. Um, I'm sorry you guys can't see that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's fun like that. Um, but this one's more intended as a cover up. There's that uh, holy water again, that lidocaine yep. spray. Uh, cover ups are, they're, they're totally doable as long as you and your client are willing to put in the work. Now you're throwing in that light blue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then I'm blending the light blue in with the red and the purple and the, oh, it's butting up against the purple. But yeah, dude, that looks really cool, man. Fucking, I really like the way this, uh, this optical illusion came out. So that's another thing. Um, when you're in your tattoo, you typically uh, aren't gonna get out of it. Um, when you get in your head, you're dead and tattooers are in our heads a lot. Uh, especially when we look at our tattoos when we're yeah. done with them. So try to be like, try to give yourself some grace. Uh, try to have grace with yourself. Try to give yourself some love. Um, try to try to be soft with yourself. Uh, try to treat yourself the way that you would treat somebody else when you're being your best self. Um, you know, because you're doing a great job. You're, you're putting in work. Uh, if you're tattooing and you care, you're putting in work every day and it's hard work. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to transform somebody's ideas into a uh, reality uh, and, and, you know, the Bentley of artwork on yep. their body, uh, you know, while they wait. And that's you throwing in a little... <laughs> throwing a little mm, extra white. On um, an existing, previous On an existing, existing tattoo, tattoo, just to... Because you're just, there and... Just to separate them out a little bit. Um, but yeah, just just because I like throwing white highlights and things. So as we're like coming up on the end of the video, um, is there anything you want to add? Um, no, nah, man. I mean, you can see how we blended everything together. You guys are about to see uh, a finished shot as well. Yeah, and you can see a little bit of the old tattoo shining through. Uh, you can see some of the, like, some of the textures or inconsistencies from the shadings. Um, but like I said, it's a first session. There's the eyeball. Um, yep. It's a first session. Uh, anything that I'm not in love with later, I can go back and change. Uh, and yeah, it was a lot of fun to do this. Well, there's, there is a wiener in this. Yeah, I have to tell you about. It. <laughs> it might be a wiener. And, uh, yeah. But yeah, so I mean, that's that. But yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. There is going to be more of these. The quality and the um, everything will improve over time. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. We will have a name for this on the next episode for sure. Yeah, you know, or we won't, you know, whatever. Or we won't, you know, work or its we way won't. out. Whatever. <laughs> but, um, you know, once again, thank you guys so much. Uh, if you found any value in this, please uh, like, share, subscribe. Go and smash uh, that like button, guys. Yeah, and uh, you know, if you're an apprentice and you have apprentice friends, uh, let, let people know that you're learning some really cool stuff from us because uh, we're going to be sharing a lot of my daily stuff that 
uh, is very unorthodox. Um, I tattoo differently than a lot of people. Um, speed and efficiency are part of my uh, producing less trauma. Um, and it's just, I like doing big tattoos and the faster I do them, the better they turn out, it seems. Uh, so yeah, we'll go more into all that later on. Yeah, you guys will learn stuff for sure here. Yeah, and so will we. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to be learning, you know, for sure. That's the whole point of this. But thank you guys so much, and we'll see you on the next one. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a great evening, day, morning, afternoon. Peace out. <laughs>